I was a rebellious teenager. I always questioned why things are working like that. Isn't there a better way? Little did I know how much this will change and how this change will lead me to my greatest regret. As I was discontent with society, I was searching for ways to change it. I was always attracted to martial arts and it seemed like a great way to empower myself. I thought that if I could master martial arts, maybe I would become powerful enough to make a difference. One day, a friend of mine invited me to try out Aikido. It seemed like everything I was looking for. A Japanese martial art which included samurai swords and even better, samurai pants. The instructor also seemed like a wise badass. A mix of Mr. Miyagi and a Street Fighter character. During each class, I attentively listened to everything he said. I learned to properly sit and bow. I was told that speaking should be kept to a minimum during training, among many other rules. I thought that if I wanted to become the best martial artist, I should also become the best possible student. So I followed every rule meticulously. Soon enough, I was no longer questioning anything. Also, soon enough, I became the best student. Although I was only 16 years old, my instructor trusted me so much that he asked me to teach some of the classes instead of him. We were regularly meeting outside of the dojo too. During these meetings, he kept sharing his martial arts knowledge with me. I felt special. I felt like I was on the right track. Yet after a few years of training, some things didn't line up. When I was once attacked in the streets and wasn't able to defend myself using Aikido, my instructor blamed me. He told me to train more. So I did. Yet when the same thing happened three more times, I could no longer stop myself from questioning. That was a very difficult process for me. My Aikido sensei was my role model. He was a father figure and a hero to me. I had a difficult time believing that he may be wrong. Eventually though, I mustered the courage to question the efficiency of his teaching methods. I was wondering if it could be improved. He would hear little of it and shut down my questions. His answer was, just continue to train more. You are simply not good enough. But I couldn't shake the feeling that he was wrong and decided to search for answers elsewhere. I thought that I needed to find a better, more experienced sensei. That led me to move to Switzerland and become a full-time student at an Aikido dojo. This sensei was on the top of his game. He trained in Japan for eight years. Two of these years, he lived in an Aikido dojo where he learned from a legendary Aikido master, a direct student of the founder himself. My new sensei also held an impressive rank in Aikido, and he had training experience with the best Aikido masters out there. I thought surely this man will have the answers to my questions. And questions I asked. For the first few days, I was bombarding him with everything I wanted to know. At first, he seemed to have answers to all of my questions. Yet after some time, I was cut off and requested to ask less questions. That's when I figured that I should go back to trying to be the best student possible. I was also encouraged to hold dearly such phrases as trust the guru completely. I decided to ask less and absorb more. When I look back, I see that at times there were questions that my sensei did not have answers to. Yet at that moment, he would get frustrated and told me to not ask silly questions. I would then immediately revert back to being the best possible student and would put the blame on myself. With time, the best student I did become. Over the years, I went up the ranks and opened a successful Aikido dojo with over a hundred students back in my home country. Prior to that, I was also frequently covering classes for my sensei. With years passing, I became one of the most important figures in the organization my sensei was leading. Yet little did I know what will happen next. One day, a BJJ practitioner entered my dojo. We soon became friends and he started teaching me BJJ on the side. I was destroyed and submitted by him every time, but I was constantly hungry for more. After all, my goal was to become the best possible martial artist. A couple of months later, my friend came up with a daring idea. He offered to train me even more intensively and then to enroll me in a BJJ tournament. I was scared, but at the same time, I was not going to say no. I knew that this was the path to become the best possible martial artist and I agreed with enthusiasm and certainty. I then wrote an email about this to my Aikido sensei. A few hours later, I received a phone call from him. This was not a common occurrence. I knew something is up. During the call, he told me he did not want me to participate in the tournament. He explained his concern that if I would participate, I would get hungry for more competitions and that would deviate me from my path of Aikido. He compared himself to a concerned dad who wanted to prevent his son from driving under the influence. I did not see eye to eye to him and tried to disagree. He then told me that if I would decide to participate in the tournament, we would still be friends, but then he could no longer be my teacher and I could no longer be part of his organization. Aikido was everything to me then. I considered this organization to be my family. 
so I decided to not push back and to promise to not participate in the tournament. Till this day, I regret yielding to him at this moment. I also couldn't have guessed what changes this experience will lead me to further. I told my BGD friend that I promised to not participate in the tournament. He could not understand my sensei's arguments. I saw my friend's frustration, but instead of fighting back, he asked me questions. He was curious and sincere in trying to understand the situation. As he asked me questions, I defended my sensei, even though I felt unsure about his arguments myself. Having no proper response to my friend's questions, I started to deviate from the subject. I felt that my lack of honesty and ability to meet my friend in the situation deteriorated our friendship. We started meeting and training less often. After a few more months, it was time for my friend to leave the country. Yet while my BGG journey came to a standstill, I felt the questioning nature of my friend stay with me. I continued to ask myself the questions he asked me. My doubts started to grow. I thought to myself, what if my sensei is wrong in this matter? What if he is wrong on even more subjects? This process of questioning fueled my martial arts journey and eventually led me to film my most watched video till this day, Aikido vs MMA, where I tested my Aikido skills against an MMA fighter. But my final and greatest challenge was still ahead of me. I released the Aikido vs MMA video without consulting with my sensei first, something I have not done before. Soon after, I got a phone call. To my surprise, at this time, my sensei still tried to be supportive about it, even though I felt that he was a little bit uncomfortable about that. He told me that it's important to question and test ourselves. But that turned out to be just words. After the Aikido vs MMA video, I continued to publicly question Aikido. That's when my final challenge happened. One day, I found myself in a messenger group chat, together with all the rest of the Aikido dojo owners of our organization. There was a message from my sensei to all of the instructors, which was questioning my YouTube videos. What shocked me was that I was not even directly addressed, even though I was part of the chat. And this means of communication continued. My fellow instructors kept sharing their concerns about me without addressing me or asking me directly about it. Eventually, I stepped in and tried to explain myself. I wrote to them that Aikido has a lot of dark sides and misunderstandings that are not being addressed. No one seemed to understand me. They told me that they didn't see any problems in Aikido that I was addressing. Once again, I was shocked. I consider these people my comrades, my brothers and sisters in arms. And yet they did not understand where I was coming from at all. Finally, my sensei made the same offer to me as with the BJJ tournaments. He told me that I'm free to continue to pursue my YouTube work questioning Aikido, but then I could no longer be part of his organization or his student. This time, I decided to not repeat the same mistake again. I told everyone then and there that I'm quitting the organization. Everyone was in shock. It became clear to me that my sensei did not expect me to do it. The next day, he called to me again. This time, I was not willing to step down anymore. He tried to tell me that I'm wrong about many of my assumptions about Aikido. Instead of agreeing, I questioned his arguments. Each time I did, he had more and more trouble to respond, until one of my arguments prompted an arrogant laugh from him. I then stopped and said, did you just hear your arrogant laughter? Is that how you represent Aikido? For a moment, he fell silent. He then continued to make a few more arguments which I countered, until eventually we had nothing to say to each other anymore. After this talk, I did not get any messages from my fellow Aikidoka or instructors, people who I considered to be my family. I then realized that I was excommunicated. For a while, I felt alone and it took me a long time to recover from this experience. But then I realized something even more important. I wanted to become the greatest martial artist and was led to believe that the quickest way to do it is through being a loyal, unquestioning student. As a result, I let go of my questioning nature to achieve this goal. But when I started to ask questions again, my life completely changed for the better. My rediscovered desire to ask questions brought me on a whole new martial arts journey. One where I was finding and discovering answers by myself, instead of searching for a godly figure which would answer all of my questions. Through this process, I met incredible people and became a new man, a version of myself that I am much happier with. I started off as a rebellious teenager and was led to believe that questioning is a bad thing. Eventually, I became a rebel again, but this time I knew that questioning is a superpower. If you're interested to learn more how I was destroyed as an Aikido black belt by a BJJ blue belt and how I changed because of it, click on this video right here. This was Rokas and I wish you to own your journey.